Hello, Scott. Can't serve you while you're on duty. Oh, who wants the stuff you serve in here? Just kidding. All right, Corey. What do you want? Sergeant Goddard told me to bring your gun license over. He got it renewed for you. Oh, thanks. Do you know how to use that gun? I know which end to point, if that's what you mean. <laughs> well, if I were you, I'd call in. Anytime you smell trouble, it's a lot safer that way. I'll do that, just as soon as they treat you boys to some faster cars. By the time you get here, my place could be in a shambles. Okay, okay. But just remember, having a gun in the drawer doesn't make you any open. <laughs> so long, Ada. So long. Outside? But it usually is these days. You know, I really should be at the office. I've been working since before dawn. Oh? Didn't sleep much last night. Dozed off toward morning, but Miss Croom's face woke me up. Yeah, so what's on your mind, Mr. Fagan? I want some advice. Some legal advice. Well, couldn't it have waited? Frankly, I don't enjoy being summoned like this. You pulled me out of a conference. It's important. I had a report this morning from the police. Sergeant Goddard, they've been investigating the fire. They're convinced that it was deliberately set to arson. They've placed the point of origin to a area over the fireplace. Could have been Catherine's fault. Did they have any suspects? No one specific as yet. Goddard politely hinted that I might have made some enemies. But we know who it was, don't we, Stephen? That was rather a dramatic exit, wasn't it? I'm sure you didn't ask me here to comment on Mrs. Cord's actions. Oh, but I did, Stephen. You see, so far, I haven't told the police my version of the facts. There's no positive evidence against Mrs. Cord. It shouldn't take them long to put two and two together once they start to investigate. If we let them. How can you keep them from it? We have a decision to make, Stephen. That's why I want your advice. Since you decided to move into my house, I assume you have no objection to handling my legal affairs again. Well, that's a logical assumption. But as my legal counselor, should I tell the police to call off the investigation? It's hardly up to you. Arson is a criminal offense. Yes, I know that. But I... I could say it was an accident. That I was alone in the living room. After Mrs. Cord left, sitting by the fireside. I fell asleep over my brandy. Bad habit of mine. There were sparks from the box. Mary had been careless again and had neglected to put up the fire screen. The newspaper ignited. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. There are holes burned to the rugs to prove it. Mr. Payton, you don't want legal advice. You want me to make a moral decision for you. Isn't that included in your services? I thought you considered yourself an expert on moral judgments. Whether or not you tell the truth is your business. If I tell the truth, Stephen, the police will find Mrs. Cord and bring her back. She'll be tried. Probably convicted and sent to jail. That's the penalty for arson, isn't it? Yes, yes. Whether she meant it or not, she could have killed me. It was an irrational act. Of course. Remarkable what an incentive hate can be, isn't it, Stephen? She had every right to hate the woman in that painting. Ah, but regardless of her feelings, she is guilty. What do you want me to do, Mr. Payton? Do you want me to arrange a meeting between you and Sergeant Goddard? Organize a posse and search for Mrs. Cord? Bring her to justice? Is that what you want? Me? Why do you insist on bringing me into it? Forcing me to decide? I've been deliberately provoking you, Stephen, for one reason. Up to now, everything's been very simple for you. Either good or bad, black or white, love or hate. You've condemned people for certain actions without bothering to ascertain their motives. If you're trying to tell me that life is complex and that people are motivated by emotions and feelings to commit certain acts, you can save your breath, Mr. Payton. Come into grips with what Mrs. Cord did. Understanding what drove her to it might be a step in the right direction. A step in the right direction? Or a key to understanding you, Mr. Payton? You're sharp, Stephen. 
very soon. And in this case, he's very right. If you'd allow that mind of yours to free itself from the emotional logjam you've been developing over the last 20 years, you might understand my action. And the cause. Understand, but not condone. And shall we call the police? I have no desire to see Mrs. Cord in jail, if that's what you mean. As far as understanding what drove her to setting the fire, it doesn't take too much imagination. We shared the last 28 years together. You might say I was star witness to her provocation. Then you're willing to let Mrs. Cord off? As far as I have anything to say about it. It's settled. It's your decision, Mr. Payton. When did Sergeant Walker come over? This afternoon. He brought me my new license. I went to put it with a gun and... And the gun was gone. Well, maybe you moved it. Think. I've kept it in this drawer since the day I got it. What makes you so sure Lee Weber took it? Apart from the fact he can't stand it. Oh, he took it. I got my life on it. You didn't answer my question. For Pete's sake, haven't you ever just known something? Yes, and I've been wrong. Steve and I know everyone who came in this bar last week. They were all regulars. Look, Lee's brother talked against him at the hearing, didn't he? And his wife throwing herself around didn't help him. Now Lee's bound to be chewing those things over. I know all that, but that doesn't add up to getting trigger happy. He got Lee off the hook, and maybe he was innocent, I don't know. But that doesn't change the fact that he's a, a scheming hoodlum with the morals of a garbage pail. Maybe. But he'd be a fool to get mixed up in anything like this so soon after the hearing. He knows he has to stay clean. I don't buy that. Will you get out of that Ivy League for a minute? There are guys who don't think, they just act. They're hungry, they grab food. Lonely, they find a girl. People I hate, they kill. Ada, why'd you call me down here? If Lee's got that gun, a lot of people are gonna be sorry he's still walking around. And since I'm the one who made that possible, I ought to be the one to handle it, right? Look, call the police. They'll be thrilled if it deals to handle it for you. Yeah, okay. I guess I figured you were just a little more involved. Now yeah, we all make mistakes. So long, Ada. Oh. Hey, Ada, can we have those beers now? the continuing story of Peyton Place. You keep your mouth shut about where you found the daughter's bracelet, Olivia. You ever touched the child? I'll kill you, Jack Chambers. Are you concerned about Rachel? For the girl herself? Or only for what she can help you find out about Alice? You have the power, if you want to use it. Remember, you can't hurt the father without also hurting the son. Mm -hmm.